Yo, what is up, everybody? It's Riley's Red Zone here, and in today's video, I will be breaking down the film of Quiddy Pay, edge rusher from Michigan. So this is our 10th episode of the 2021 NFL Draft Analysis. So sorry for not uploading in a little bit. I did a few free agency videos, and now we're back on the draft content. The draft is in less than a month. Um, so I will be trying to get a few more film breakdown videos out. So today I would like to give a shout out here to Yo boy Johan for suggesting I do a video on Quiddy Pay. So thank you for suggesting that. I will be saying I probably won't be taking many more suggestions in the comments for this year's film breakdowns. I still have uh, a few, I think at least four. Uh, that I'll be doing hopefully if I have enough time that people suggested but you can put your name on the list for next year's prospects I already have three players that I'll be breaking down next year because people suggested them and then they chose to go back to school but in today's video I'm gonna be looking at Quiddy Pay edge rusher from Michigan so this year's edge class is a very interesting uh, group I wouldn't say there's a very dominant number one that everybody is um, like saying is the best really there is no top five pick clear uh for anybody it's all over the place some people like gregory Rousseau. some people think he's like a third round prospect jalen phillips is kind of uh same thing some people really like him some people don't uh, and then behind him you have like aziz olujari i'd say quiddy pay is pretty consistently right in the middle it seems um for everybody I'm also going to say I've been watching a lot of prospects behind the scenes that I've not been making uh, film breakdown videos of. I started by, I think, uh, going by every position, but now I'm trying to get the top guys so I at least have an idea. Um, and I haven't gotten to see any other edge rushers besides what we'll see in Quiddy Pay today. So I haven't decided yet who I think is the best, um, but I think it will be interesting to see. So I want to see where Pay figuratively in the rest of the class stands up, not necessarily the edge class, but just overall, is he worth a top 10 pick? Is he worth a first round pick? So that's what I'm here to find out today. We're going to watch him against Minnesota, Penn State, and Michigan State all in 2020. And what I will say about Pay is from what I've seen, um, statistically, the production has not always been there at Michigan, but we're really looking at the film and when he does that production, you know, is it dominant? We're looking to see what can he potentially be, and this is going to be my first uh, defensive player so far, so it's going to be a little different. Uh, this is going to be closer formatting to the Devontae Smith Jamar Chase video where I'm going to zoom in because you really want to see those one-on-one -on -one matchups and today versus some of the other videos it's going to be important to really classify what scheme pay would fit in is he a 3-4 defensive end is he a 3-4 outside linebacker is he a 4-3 defensive end where does he fit so let's get right into watching the tape Starting up at the top against Minnesota, a good chase down tackle, pretty good speed for his size. He is 272 pounds, nobody really to block him anyways, but he does show a little bit of burst. Um, a lot of people call him twitchy, so he's showing that right off the bat. Second and 10 here with a swim move gets around the edge. These are some big tackles at the University of Minnesota, and so his size doesn't match up, but he has the speed here to get around him, uses his feet really well, and gets the pressure on Tanner Morgan to the outside. Uses that footwork really well, and his swim move is very dominant. Bottom of the screen here, going to get past one blocker and then disrupt the second one. Very good job here. It does seem pretty clear that the tackle was not planning on blocking pay for very long, but he does get past the initial move and gets just enough to maybe move the running back's motion and where he was going on the play. Third and goal here, gets around the outside, almost gets the sack. Nice pressure though here. Definitely has the speed to get around the outside, but not incredibly fast where he can finish that sack like maybe some of the top pass rushers could. But he shows some good footwork and gets on the edge and gets enough pressure to disrupt the pass. This one at the top of your screen getting some pressure as well. Another swim move against a big tackle this time. The right tackle and still having some success getting off that initial block. In a little bit more time if Morgan had the ball that would probably be a sack. 
bottom of the screen here this is not a great play from pay just in general showing that his strength is not top notch this is a tight end that is matching up with and that can be a really good blocking tight end but you know it's interesting to see that he can use his speed against these even bigger tackles who probably have more strength than with than this tight end but when he's lined up with just a, a blocker one-on-one -on -one, he can't always get through them top of the screen now here there's that swim move again gets blocked because he had to cut back inside to stop the run but if this was a pass rushing snap right there he's got the edge had to cut backwards to maybe get to the run but he gets that initial get off speed so he's a really big player but for his get off based on his size it's pretty good you get an immediate advantage on the snap top of the screen again here getting the edge not quite fast enough to get to the quarterback but here's the get off again gets the edge to the outside and the ball's already gone but you once again see the quick get off speed getting to the outside before the tackle can set his feet Here's one that's not an unbelievable play, but you do see a little bit of strength from Pay here. Is able to push the tackle back and then realize that it's a run and get over there, at least try to. Um, so you do see some power on this one, gets that tackle kind of out of his position. Now in the middle, trying to get to the outside, and this is a beautiful play. He doesn't quite make the tackle, but he reads the screen, sees it's a halfback screen here, and then is able to make a push that forces Ibrahim to actually cut back inside instead of what you would normally do on the screen. So this one is very good awareness. He's lining up in the middle, and then gets over there and completely disrupts the whole play. If it's not for his movement there, that's a pretty big gain on the screen. Back up at the top here, getting a push and completely disrupting any opportunity for the running back to cut back outside it's forcing in and then his defenders can make a play still a pretty big gain for the gophers but pay here does completely change the play i believe this was a stretch to the outside uh, that could have been a really big gain but pay sets the edge well and doesn't allow that to happen Bottom of the screen now, going to get some power, get through, and not quite get there to Morgan. But you see once again, he gets the outside, and then he cuts back inside on his move and completely shifts the tackle. We've seen it again here. The size advantages to the tackle, um, but he completely bullies them on this play and then forces the tackle way too outside, and Pay has enough speed to just quickly cut back inside and almost get to the quarterback. Now against the left tackle, good to see here some pressure, hits a spin move at the end, but double teamed for a majority of this play and still gets a lot of power, gets kind of tangled up, but he drives the entire defensive line here and allows his defender to actually get some pressure on Morgan. So he kind of leads this play, taking up two blockers. Bottom of the screen here, a lot of power again, and that's a tackle for loss. Second time in this game, we've seen maybe a stretch to the outside, and he says no. Shut down on this one. Actually makes a tackle for loss here. Great play. Pushes that tackle back like it is easy. Automatically sets the edge and then has long enough arms and reach to actually make the tackle beautiful play Third and 11 on this one once again the speed coming from behind you got to be careful Tanner Morgan Because the speed is absolutely too much for the tackles on this one He really does have quite a lot of bursts for his size it, Literally it didn't even look like 70 tried to block him there. I mean too easy staying too far to the inside um, and just lets him go through. Absolutely great job from Pay. A lot of speed. Bottom of the screen, getting some pressure here on the power spin move. Almost finishes it off. Uh, the power is shown on this one. It's a, you know, he gets to the inside here, gets kind of tangled up, so he spins out of it very smartly. Can't quite finish the tackle. You'll see that a little bit later. Sometimes he can't quite finish the tackle. Um, it seems like he has decent reach, like he reaches to Morgan but just can't finish it. But really good job here. That last spin move to get out of it was genius. Even though he doesn't bring him down, it basically, you could credit him with half a sack on that. Second and 21, now getting instant pressure from the inside in perhaps his best play all day. That was instantaneous. Gets through two people, 
Wow, that was unbelievable. The burst is there. His signature move again. Absolutely gets through the guard, breaks his ankles like a basketball player, and then runs over the running back. This might be the best play you'll see all day. One man wrecking crew on this one. This is unbelievable. Both the power and the speed and agility are shown on that one. Now a third and 28 going around the outside and he's going to get another one. He's a streaky player. He's taking advantage of these big offensive linemen's speed and footwork that weren't very good in this game. And he gets that pressure instantly off the edge unbelievable stride again the burst is instantly there he's the farthest out of anybody gets around and wraps morgan up that is another great play two back-to-back -back, uh game wrecking plays i mean brought them to a third and 28 and then finishes it again second and 10 now at the top of the screen gets through and gets some pressure on him forces Morgan to step up, gets to the inside, then gets another blocker, just gets chipped. Otherwise, honestly, that could be another sack. Great job once again. The burst, his footwork, the swim move into the inside, barely gets chipped. Otherwise, that's another sack. Another great play. Last play we're looking at in this game, pressure off the edge and forces Morgan to roll out. This same move over and over again, but he's just faster than these big offensive tackles. See, he's a very speed, I'd say, centered player. Uh, mostly he's not the best you've ever seen at it but he's more speed than power so he takes advantage of these bigger tackles and just gets around and that's going to be the end of the game well we just watched him against minnesota and i gotta say that was quite an unbelievable game now what i will say is that's for sure possibly his best game of last season if not his whole career so that's kind of him at his best and at his best he was a game breaker. I mean, those two big plays in a row single-handedly um, changed, like, everything there. I mean, that was unbelievable. He's a very interesting player. I can see why he's not the best you've ever seen. Um, he's a streaky player. He doesn't have one single strength. He's kind of balanced. I wouldn't, at this point now, I've seen he's probably more speed than power, but he's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none type of player. He's not super, he's not the fastest you've ever seen, but for his weight, he's actually um, pretty fast. And But for his weight, also, I don't think his strength is unbelievable. It's pretty good at times, but then you see him match up against tight ends and struggle. That's a little concerning, um, but he absolutely bullied that Minnesota offensive line in this game so at his best he can really be a difference maker and we saw that in this game so he's definitely very consistent you know what you're getting out of him he's going to use a lot of the same moves that can be pretty successful at times so now we're going to watch him against Penn State and I will say once again that was probably him at his best so we'll see how he does maybe on a normal day basically Bottom of the screen here, trying to crash the run, but ends up being blocked. Gets to the outside here, and you can tell once again, his speed is pretty good. Not the best you've ever seen. So he gets an edge here, but good block um, coming back in. But then once we get the outside leverage here, you just want to see him go. He does. He tries his best. He's pretty fast, but not fast enough as some of the top ones to make that tackle. Bottom of the screen here once again, getting around the edge, almost getting there. Uh, definitely a pretty good rep here, getting around the edge, just can't quite get there for the sack. Top of the screen now, wide open there, and you just got to make a decision. I understand if you bite one way, you're going to not get the other, but the worst thing you can do is do what he does here and just stand there. I mean, and what's even worse is by the time he does set his feet, it's pretty clear the running back has the ball. I mean, look at it right there. It, it, he just is delayed on that one. So this is something you'll see again later because they actually did run a lot of read options here. He struggles a little bit in his decision making. Bottom of the screen, getting around the edge, and still chasing from behind to get a tackle. That's what you like to see. You like to see the effort. Uh, you know, if it was a pass rush, he probably could have got there, but he stays with the play and ends up making a tackle. Third and eight at the bottom of your screen here. Going to get there fast enough to actually get a little bit of a hand on the ball. Good pressure. Disrupts the quarterback. 
fast enough to really make a difference here, gets to the edge, makes the quarterback kind of have to step up a little bit, pushes that tackle. You see the power and the speed kind of mixed together. The speed at the beginning, and then even when he's getting blocked, he has enough strength to get through. Top of the screen here, going to get through, get some pressure. Still is a good play for the offense, but he gets that pressure instantaneously once again. You know, same kind of swim move to the outside, has the speed to get past him, and almost gets to the deflect ball. Top of the screen again here, the power shown on that one. Doesn't get to the quarterback, but look at him absolutely bulldoze through the tackle and maybe disrupts the pocket. Um, that is really good power shown again here. So we're seeing the mix of speed and power with Pay. Bottom of the screen now does another move. And it's a little too far out. You know, the quarterback didn't go very far back. So we saw earlier he has to cut back. But great get off. Once again, he's consistently getting that advantage to the outside. You like to see that he consistently is getting the edge. Top of the screen here near the goal line. Going to cut back inside, get a little power, disrupt the pocket as the quarterback tries to step up. A pretty good rep here. Um, pretty consistent gets a little bit of power into the inside, gets through that first tackle, and then moves on to the guard and really tries to get to the quarterback here and just disrupts Clifford a little bit. Bottom of the screen here, and once again, just a little indecisiveness, a better job on this one, eventually makes the tackle. This one is a much better job. He kind of eventually realizes quicker that the running back has the ball and ends up making the tackle. So he already improved in this game covering the read option. Second and seven at the bottom here and doesn't make a tackle. Another example of he has a good amount of length, but just can't get there. Gets chipped a little bit. Good last ditch effort from that blocker. Um, but the speed is there, you know, but nobody really blocked him up until then. So he definitely disrupts the play, uh, but can't quite finish the tackle. Top of the screen here, lots of power. Doesn't get there because it's a quick system read, but definitely disrupts it a little bit. Really good power shown here. Absolutely bulldozes the left tackle on that play. Bottom of the screen here, another good effort play. Does a good job with the blocker, but then gets off of him quick enough to turn around and actually make the tackle on the quarterback. So good effort from here and a good amount of length there to make that tackle on that one. So this was a good job from Pay making the tackle. Third and six in the middle now gets off of it and just can't make the tackle. You really let Sean Clifford do that to you. See, this is what you just, um, his length is pretty good, but then just can't finish tackles. Uh, good effort, I guess, diving on the play, but you're really going to let Sean Clifford outrun you? I don't know about that one, but I guess it's a decent job at the beginning. Gets off of him. You like to see that here. Um, maybe slows him down a little, but can't finish the tackle and ends up just looking embarrassing. Now that we've watched two games of Cody Pay, we have a better idea of who he is. We saw an absolutely amazing game and an okay game, pretty good, I'd say, against Penn State. So we kind of have to assume he's somewhere in the middle. So this part of the video that I normally start to draw some comparisons to real NFL players. And in this one, I'll probably talk about scheme fit in this one as well. Um, this is a player that I think really fits Quiddy Pay well, and I'm pretty happy about this comparison I found um, that I really remembered him. As a Vikings fan, I saw the motion, and it's really what got me. Uh, I think Everson Griffin is a very good comparison for Quiddy Pay. Uh, he's okay at speed. His power's pretty good. He's never been an unbelievable pass rusher. He's a, at his prime, he was a bottom tier number one high-end number two pass rusher that's what I view Quiddy Pay as he can be a really game good game wrecker like he was against Minnesota um, but for example with Everson Griffin he was pretty good but then you bring Daniel Hunter on the other side and he honestly almost did even better at least with play so I think that's a good comparison similar size and going with that I think he would be in a similar scheme he is pretty big for a defensive end you look at the top like seven ends in this class and he's by far the biggest by like over 15 pounds he's not big enough to play like d tackle he maybe could play i don't think he'd play th i think he's an edge rusher um i don't think he'd play three four and um i think that he's most likely best suited for four three defensive end i don't think he has quite enough speed to be consistently as a three four pass rusher on an outside linebacker it could work definitely but for me i think his best 
fit would be a 4-3 defensive end. He can rush the passer, ideally as a number two. Uh, maybe have somebody else to be there, but on his good days, or maybe if that number one's hurt, he can be a game record. So that's why I think Quiddy Pay is. I think Everson Griffin is a great comparison for that. So now let's watch him against Michigan State, and then after that, I'll talk about where he kind of ranks in the draft. Where would I pick him? Bottom of the screen now, going to go up against the tackle and gets a lot of power. Doesn't get to the quarterback, but gets an initial, you know, speed, right? He's farther than anybody else. And then he's able to get a little bit of power and at least disrupt the quarterback. Second and 10, top of the screen. Going to get a hit on Lombardi here. Not there to get a sack, but definitely good pressure here. You'll see it from this angle. One-on-one uh, -on -one with the tackle does that same thing. Gets to the outside and just gets right in there enough to maybe make a little bit of an effect on the ball. Top of the screen now, going to go one-on-one -on -one again with the tackle. Getting to the inside, same thing. Didn't quite get there fast enough, but very good rep once again. Getting to the outside and then just powering through with the speed. He's winning a majority of, you know, his reps. I haven't shown all of them, but even when he doesn't get a sack, he's making a lot of progress. He's disrupting the play. Top of the screen here, trying to get there, can't get there quite fast enough. Does get a hit on him though, realizes he has the ball and has enough speed to kind of get a little bit of an impact, forces the quarterback to get rid of it early, and that forces an incompletion. So pretty decent job. Not quite fast enough to get there, but once again disrupts the play. Bottom of the screen is going to be a good block from the tackle initially, but then Pay has enough length to get an arm in there. Doesn't make the full-on tackle, but then once the running back is to the left of him, he just disengages and has enough speed to at least make a little bit of an impact there. His arm did reach out and get a little bit of a tackle on the running back. So he does have a decent amount of length here and is very rangy. Third and four, not one of the best ones yet. He tries to move forward. He does at least a little bit, but pretty good job from the tackle. Just bringing him away from his side because you know if you allow pay to get the edge, it might be game or over for you. So good job at the tackle. This might be the way you want to stop pay is force him inside. We know his speed is better than his strength. So good job from 76 here. First and 10, top of the screen. There he is getting the edge and getting some pressure on it. Completely makes the throw uncatchable. Great job. We saw how you block him on the last play. The right tackle doesn't do the same thing. And he's way too good at getting to the edge here. He's faster than all these linemen. So he's able to disrupt the play and completely change the path. Second and seven here. Good job getting off of the block. Once again, we've seen it many times. Not quite fast enough to get a sack. But here, he sheds off the block to the left really easily, and that's all speed from there. He He's fast enough to at least, you know, intimidate the quarterback. He makes the easy check down because he's wide open, but pretty good job here from Pay adjusting on the fly. And then once he's in the open field, he has a decent amount of speed to at least kind of change the pass. Second and 10 at the bottom of your screen here. Gets to the outside and then can't quite get back in. The left tackle is doing a better job than the right tackle guarding pay. He does get the outside here, but then is able to, you know, bring him back inside. You don't want pay to just go consistently out to the outside. Um, and if he does, you know, that's an easy sack. So it definitely was another good rep from pay. But you got to realize that stopping him from going all the way out is the way to block him. Bottom of the screen here, now rushing inside, still having success, even getting a little bit, you know, off the map here by, you know, maybe you can make a case for holding a little bit, um, still almost gets there to the quarterback, so this, now you see the power, so it's just all over to me, like some plays, you know, if you get him to the inside, he doesn't do as well because he's not as great with power, but on this one, he powers through. So he's, like I said earlier, kind of a jack-of-all-trades master of none. He's probably more speed than power, but he shows a little bit of everything in this game. Second and 10 instantly and doesn't make the tackle. Look at the speed. I mean, that is a literal freight train coming at you, but I will respect... Um, you know, earlier I said he didn't make a guess. He made a guess this time. It was wrong, but it, he honestly, I'd rather have him do that than do nothing. At least here he gets an arm and slows down the quarterback and allows his teammates to make the tackle versus earlier he literally stood still. So you can see the improvement even within the own season to make a difference. And this was much better. He missed the tackle, um, but he had enough length to in his arms to at least affect the play a little bit so better job he's progressing in that read option defense 
towards the top of your screen here. Much better job. Powers through that running back. He said sit down. Uh, maybe was projecting run. He chops his feet instead of standing still like he did earlier. Like I said, he's progressing. And then absolutely bulldozes that running back once he does begin to block. So just sit down. If he, they didn't throw that right away, that's probably sack. That is just absolutely unbelievable here. I mean, look at the speed, the momentum he has. Like, his strength may not be unbelievable, but, like, if you can't, that's a whole ton of momentum to stop. I mean, once he's going, it's hard to stop him. Top of the screen here now, making a chase down tackle. That is great to see. He has enough speed. You know, doesn't get there initially. Got to go make a play. Gets past his other defender, but Pay is there to make a tackle. Great chase down speed. Well, we just broke down the film of Quiddy Pay, and now we have a better idea of who he is. He's a very unique player. Um, I don't think it's super clear to me like he's a top five, you know, a top ten pick, obviously, um, that he's for sure the number one edge in this class. I'll still have to watch some other players, the Miami pass rushers, uh, among other players, to really get an idea of who that is. But I think he's very consistent. I think it's, um, you know, to me it should be clear to everybody where he is I think he is a first round player I'll talk about in a second specifically where but to me he should be in the middle I can understand if he's not your top pass rusher but he's very consistent you know what you're getting from this guy uh, he's you know a senior so he's had plenty of years to develop um, Maybe he hasn't had the unbelievable production other players have, but you're seeing development. We even saw within this own season, he's changing the way he plays and for the better. And so let's talk about his skill set. He, as I've said multiple times, I don't think he's a master of anything, so he's a jack of all trades, but more so, I'd say he's probably 70%, maybe 65% speed, and closer to 30% power. Um, or maybe 35, you know, like, he's kind of a mix. His power is inconsistent. Sometimes he'll absolutely bulldoze these guards or tackles in the inside and make a good play, and other times he's matched up against a tight end and can't do anything. So it's really inconsistent there, but his speed is always there. He's consistent. His motion is always the same every play. I am concerned maybe he's using the same move too many times, um, but one thing you can't ever really lose or change is his speed. So even if you know he can gain new moves, um, and let alone if you can just seriously, we saw so many times in this video, he just straight up ran through the tackles, just through the outside. He just literally ran to the outside and Arched around and got a sack or a tackle for loss. He can do that. Um, I don't think he is a clearly, like I said earlier, a top five pick, meaning I don't think he's obviously a number one pass rusher. He can be. I think if your number one's hurt, he can definitely step in. But ideally, I think you'd want him as a number two who can come in and be really explosive. Uh, don't, you don't want this guy getting double teamed. I know I didn't show too many, but when he did have double teams, he didn't ever you know get through them very often so you want this guy to be your number two pass rusher ideally and it's worth you know a, a first round pick to do so so my grade for quitty pay is going to be a middle of the first round pick just based on who i've watched so far of all the positions um that's where i'd have him uh kind of i think he'll be a middle of the first round player uh, I think out of the edge rushers, I haven't watched, obviously, but if we, I go off what other people are saying, if it really is inconsistent with these other ones, I feel like he might be a safe choice. You know, if you're gets down to it and you need somebody who can for sure do it, you know, we've got concerns with other ones, he might be the safe choice. So I overall think that Quiddy Pay will be successful in the NFL. Um, I do think he has a really good skill set. He's never going to be an unbelievable edge rusher, but he's at least going to be good. So thank you so much for watching this video. My next b film breakdown will probably be Patrick Sertain, the cornerback out of Alabama. So I'll be very interested to see that possible number one corner. Um, so we'll be breaking that down next. Like I said earlier, my goal is to be live streaming during all three days of the draft. I've been doing a lot of work off the scenes. And now still just trying to watch players uh, work on my spreadsheets to really talk about what I think of each one. Um, and so that's going to be this month of content for you is going to be a lot of draft content. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.